Welcome back to the marathon series in depth. This is the last level in the first marathon game where we will be on the four ship. This is also the last level that was made by J. Reginald DuJour and cleaned up by Jason Jones and Gregory Patrick. In the last mission, we have defeated the four cyborg. So how come Durandal teleport us back to another section of the four ship? Perhaps there is something here for us to discover. This mission does feature the mysterious four egg, and we'll discuss that more in detail later. There are no original level design notes for this mission, suggesting that it was added on at some point during the game design. Another alternative though, is that one of the levels that was going to be in the next chapter was moved to here. You see, there are two original level design notes in the next chapter that are tied to one mission. Perhaps a mission was added here as things got shifted around. This level does seem to be intentionally made for the fourth ship, so the possibility that it was moved from later mission is somewhat unlikely. There are some remnants in the original design map files that suggest the level Unforgiven was originally going to be called Ain't Got Time For This. This further suggests that the level may have been moved to the end of the chapter and a new level was added in, but who really knows. The level name Ain't Got Time For This is reminiscent of the security officer's feelings of still having to fight on the four ship while he has got things to do. Like some of the other four levels, this level has quite a bit of flashing lights, so if that gives you an issue, you are warned. Right, guys, here we are on Ain't Got Time For This. There's some of these wasps in these green goo pits. Um, just shooting your bullet, wakes them all up. And we can just jump across and we can take a little bit of damage. There's some troopers back there. There's a save. There's gonna be some troopers behind you. Alright, so we can go back and heal before we progress some more. The only thing is, like, every time we go back to heal, we gotta take some damage. So we just gotta keep that in mind. There are a lot of troopers in this level, and troopers are kind of a pain, so it's hard to not take damage and need, not need to go heal on total carnage. I'll drop off. We can get back up, though, if we need to go back and heal, which we will. Got a little assault rifle here. Left is where we need to go to finish the mission, so we can go right. There's a double locked door. Okay, I gotta be careful, because I can't take much more damage before I won't be able to go back and heal. Yeah, they're all dead. Okay, we can go back and heal, and hopefully I don't take too much damage, because I'm kind of on the, the threshold. It's a little bit annoying because how much damage you take each time is different. It's like this time I'm taking damage almost every single one, which is not good. Okay, I just made it. We'll probably have to come back and heal a couple more times. It's hard to get through this level without having to come back and heal. 
on Total Carnage. Especially since the screen pitch just take away your health. Anyways, we're gonna go this way now. There's some wasps in this hallway, it's not far down. Oh nice, I got them all. Okay, we open this door, and there's a lot of wasps out here. I'm just gonna let them all knock each other out. Trying to keep the compiler blocking them. Now he's shooting them. Okay, so those guys wake up, but if I come back in, they all go back to sleep. Oh. There is a trooper, he's kind of running this way. Oh, he fell in the green goo. He's all like stuck in there. <laughs> okay. Alright, so this room. Oh! Oh no! Okay. Now you can kind of see this strange room with all these wasps. <clears throat> all the most of these wasps on the walls are all deactivated. Um. So, I mean, you got to hit the switch over here. That opens a panel up there. I guess you can't see it right there. Shoot that one, and then this turned off. Okay, compiler. Blocking my path. Okay, I'm gonna go... There's kind of a, like, one more tough fight, so I'm gonna go back and heal. We'll do that fight, and then... I'll just have to... So I need to go back and heal twice, because I gotta go back, uh... To save it at the very end, so... Okay. Where am I? Why am I not getting up? I must not be putting down enough. I mean, I'm going too fast. It only takes a second to go heal, but it, it is kind of annoying. Especially, it's pretty hard to get through all that stuff on Total Carnage without um, having to come back, because... Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not good. Alright, let's go, let's go. Okay, so this fight, we're gonna... There's kind of like a ledge in here. Because this is a teleporter in the other room that takes us to the top of this ledge, but we're gonna do it this way and you'll see why because there's kind of like a corner here there's a bunch of troopers so I'm gonna go shoot a pistol shot over them to wake up these fit that are behind these troopers around the corner and then I'm gonna use my alien weapon you see those that shot woke up those compilers Alright, then we wipe the floor with them. Actually, this is my health is good enough. We can just go on because we'll just save it the next start of the next level. So I'll, I'll see you then next time. The song for this mission is New Pacific. This is the last time we will get to hear this song in game, as this is the last level on the Sphera in the first marathon game. Don't worry though, I will keep playing it here and there for you. The goal of this mission is to hit a certain switch and then go to a window to allow Durandal to teleport us off. More on this switch later. The map has some writing that reads DC Romley. 
I'm not sure what this means, but my guess is that one of the authors of this map was trying to insert someone's name into the game. This map writing appears to be an unsolved marathon mystery. The level starts off with a shield recharge station, and the pattern buffer is not far away. This is much needed after playing through all of Phorophobia without being able to recharge our shields or save the game. At the start of the level, you have to jump across some green goo. Watch out for the wasps though. Shooting a bullet should wake them up and draw them out. The green goo will do a little damage to you, but nothing to fret about. The next room has some troopers guarding a pattern buffer. If they bother the compilers, then the compilers will attack the troopers for you. Thankfully, the compilers will not attack us. I guess defeating the four cyborg was worth the trouble. After killing the troopers, do not forget to save your game. After going through the door to the next area, there is another long hallway with some green goo that we have to jump over again. Taking damage is a little bit annoying, but let's put on our big boy pants and get over it. Along the path, there is a drop off to prevent players from going back to heal and save. Of course, you know you can easily make it up that ledge with several different weapons including the flamethrower by this point in the series. A little ledge never stopped anyone. After jumping across the last bit of green goo, I would take a look at your health meter so you know later on if you have enough health to make it back to the start of the level. Just to keep in mind that the damage might not always be exactly the same. Shortly later, you arrive at a spot with multiple paths that has an assault rifle. Now why is there an assault rifle here on the fourth ship you might wonder? Well, the answer is quite simple really. You cannot vid master the level without a weapon that can hit switches from far away. So clearly it was added by Bungie when they were trying to vid master the level. From a lore perspective though, it is quite a head scratcher. You have to go down the path to the left to win the level and can skip the right path, so let's discuss the right path first. Shortly down the path to the right, you end up with a double set of doors that can be opened by hitting the two switches on the right. This leads to a room with several troopers and wasps. This room is quite mysterious as it features flashing lights, hunter armor, mysterious four eggs, and a column of green goo at the center. There was an eerily similar column of green goo where the sleeping army was on Euphoria. Some speculate that this means that one level is on top of the other. Another possibility is that the green column is food, or something like that for the four, as they have it where they are sleeping and where their eggs are. Anyways, it's a bit of a mystery. The 11 four eggs in this room are really the head scratcher. There is actually one more on this level we will soon see that makes a total of 12. Some of them are facing to the right and the others to the left. Mark Levin revealed these eggs are named for dormant in the marathon shape files. This seems to imply that there is indeed a 4 inside. According to the Marathon story page, the level creator J. Reginald DuJour also referred to the eggs as incubation bubbles. Apparently, a Marathon fan was able to track down J. Reginald DuJour back on April 20th of 1998. This fan also revealed that Reg had said the eggs were originally supposed to be breakable, but this was never implemented due to time constraints. While these might technically be incubation bubbles, and not eggs, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is not a 4 growing inside. Incubation, by definition, is the process of incubating eggs, cells, bacteria, and so on. I would think that an incubation bubble would have a similar function to an incubation chamber. Normally incubation chambers are used to grow plants and microbiological cells. The purpose of an incubation chamber is to maintain a certain temperature humidity, and other conditions for the growth of what's inside. This is similar to what an egg does, except for the fact that an egg is not an electronic device like an incubation chamber. In this video, I will use the words egg interchangeably with incubation bubble because it doesn't seem like it makes much of a difference from a lower perspective. The four eggs appear to have a clear surface, allowing us to take a look at what's inside. There appears to be some white spots that kind of look like air bubbles. The bottom of the egg has some green stuff that sort of looks like algae. Perhaps this is food for the four inside. Which way the arms and legs are going is a bit hard to make out in the pixelated image. The four appears to have a red appendage which kind of looks like an arm. Since there is only one of them, it makes me wonder if this is some sort of umbilical cord, but that is not clear. 
There was a white spot on the four's head that I am assuming is the mouth, and a red spot that must be the four's eye. This is so hard to make out though that I am not certain of anything. In the same room is a ledge which you can teleport up to later on, so let's discuss the other path that we didn't take back on the hallway where we picked up the assault rifle if we had not turned right and went straight instead. This hallway goes a long way with some turns for seemingly no reason. There are a couple of wasps along the hallway. It seems that the level's creator was trying to do something artistic with these hallways, but it does seem kind of pointless. Anyways, at the end of the hallway is a door that leads to a very large room with lots and lots of wasps. There is a lone trooper at the end of the hallway, but chances are he will fall in the green goo in the middle and end up killing himself. Most of the wasps end up getting stuck on the wall in this room, so you really only have to kill a small portion of them that wake up. Did anyone at Bungie even test this level? Anyways, this room has a small narrow path that leads across the room with a teleporter at the end. There is a pit of green goo all around the center of the room that has a raised up green goo platform with an egg on a block moving up and down. Really a strange sight. What could this be? On the left wall is a switch that you have to shoot to activate it. Although I suppose you could be cute and fly to it with a flamethrower or jump from the rising platform. This switch opens up a panel on the opposite side of the room that reveals another switch that sort of looks like a computer chip. Anyways, this is the switch you must activate to beat the mission. When you hit the switch, some of the lights in the center turn off and the egg platform stops moving up and down. This gives you the impression that you turn something off. The question is, what did we deactivate? The game never really tells you, however, Jason Jones gives us a hint of what this area is in a response to a Usenet post about the game's plot. You can still easily find this message if you do a search in Google Group's messages. However, Hamish Sinclair also kept it secure on the Marathon story page. Here was the relevant portion of what Jason had to say. As soon as you killed the four cyborg that was telepathically controlling this fit and deactivated the four reactor, I had to stop him mid-sentence because of spoilers. However, it seems obvious that the four reactor is what we deactivated when we hit that switch. I guess Bungie was doing more showing instead of telling for this plot element. Now, what exactly is up with this egg is a question that I don't have a good answer for. Why would there be a larger egg in the center of the Force reactor? Perhaps this would be the next Force cyborg that would control the compilers. The truth is, we don't really know. The question about the egg was directed at Alex Ropian and Tunster Dennis in an AOL chat back in 1995. And this is what they had to say about it. For instance, on one of the four ship levels, there was a moving platform with an egg. What's up with that? Alex Ropian replied, I never figured out the egg. It really spooked me out the first time I saw it though. Tunser Dennis replied, Get the Marathon Official Strategy Guide to find out. Tunser fibbed here as the Marathon Official Strategy Guide doesn't mention the egg at all. What we learned though is that even Alex Ropian didn't know what exactly the eggs were. My guess is that J. Reginald DeJour put the level together and it was added into the game and somewhat rushed. Hence the reason most of the wasps won't activate. These eggs certainly do add a sense of mystery to the floor and the Sephira. When you get to the teleporter at the end of the room, you are taken to the top ledge back in the room with 11 four eggs. When you arrive, however, there was a large group of troopers behind you eager to greet you. How lovely. You could run by them to a large room with some windows to space that you can exit the level from. The room also has a bunch of dormant SFIT compilers. However, if you shoot a bullet, they will wake up and start attacking the troopers for you. You can either choose to fight the troopers with the help of the compilers, or you can try to run to the exit and leave the mission. If you want to kill the troopers, it's actually easier to use a flamethrower to climb the ledge and meet them that way rather than to teleport in, because you have a corner to meet them around and also you don't teleport with them behind your back. If you don't shoot into the room with the compilers, they won't wake up, so you might want to start off the fight by shooting a single pistol shot over the troopers heads into the back room. You should note though, that if you did not open the double doors earlier, you cannot return to the start of level and also have a bunch of enemies if you run from the troopers. It's probably best to clear out this area first 
before proceeding to the reactor. If you do happen to go through the teleporter and did not turn off the reactor, then you will be stuck and have to reload, as Duranda will not teleport you off the level and your way back is blocked off by the double doors. Well that's it for this mission. In the next level we will be back on the Marathon ship and we'll get to hear from Duranda once again. See you all then.